Yes, they've finally arrived in the mail this week. I've finally received my 10 millimeter carbon fiber tubing. I'm going to see if I can use this 10 millimeter tubing in lieu of the 10 millimeter anodized aluminum on the X gantry. One of the main design goals with the Hypercube was ensuring that the moving mass was as light as possible. And as this is a core XY design in the Hypercube 3D printer, that included the rods or the rails on the X axis. Normally we use 8mm steel, but still can be quite heavy. So that's why I originally opted for uh, aluminium. In this case, this is anodized aluminium with a 10mm diameter. But as some of you, or most of you, have probably found out, this anodized aluminium in a 10 millimeter diameter isn't the easiest stuff to find around the world. So let's try something else with a 10 millimeter diameter. And here we have 10 millimeter carbon fiber tubing. This is 10 millimeter by 8 millimeter, so it has a thickness of 1 millimeter. It is extremely stiff. You're not going to be able to bend this stuff without potentially splintering or cracking the actual carbon fiber itself. But that's not to say that this is going to work. This is just an experiment to see if we can actually use carbon fiber on the X gantry. Early on in the build lock series, I originally started with 10 millimeter uh, milled or raw aluminium. This aluminium is not sealed. It is exposed to air and therefore it has an oxidized layer over the top. Plenty of comments during the early build lock videos mentioned that this is a bad choice for this particular use case because every time the bushing would slide past this raw aluminium, it would scrape off that aluminium oxide layer, re-exposing the raw aluminium underneath, which would then uh, oxidize again. And over time, throughout the bushing sliding back and forth over the rod, would uh, build up some uh, aluminium oxide, which just looks like a, a black soot and could potentially clog or start to uh, act like a brake on the particular rail. Hence why I shifted to an anodized aluminium as it seals the actual aluminium from the air. But carbon fiber is a man-made product. It, this does not suffer from any oxidization effects. So we don't need to worry about having an anodized finish. All that we really need to worry about is the tolerance to make sure that it's uh, a true 10 millimeters. Uh, to ensure that the tolerance is uniform throughout the entire length of the rail uh, and to also ensure that the friction on the actual surface of this uh, carbon fiber tubing isn't so great that it causes the bushing to bind. So the first thing we'll check for is the tolerance or how close to 10 millimeters the outer diameter of these rods are. And of course I have my trusty digital uh, calipers here. So I'll take this first 10 millimeter rod and I'll measure down here somewhere, the diameter of it. So that's pretty good. Pretty much bang on 10, 9.98. I'll move up here a bit, see if I still get that reading. 9.98, not bad. Turn it around, go back down here. So down here it's a bit, it's a bit smaller, 9.92. Move up here a bit. 9.96 so looking at this particular rod this is a 500 millimeter length now I don't need all 500 millimeters this is just the length that you buy these rods in I only need 360 millimeters so knowing that from this side of the rod up to about here somewhere it seems quite uniform in diameter this is the side of the rod that I'll take this last piece over here, which is slightly smaller in diameter, I'll chop that off and that'll be the waist side. The next test will be sliding a bushing across these rails to ensure that they don't stick while they're moving. I'll start with an individual uh, steel bushing first and then I'll graduate over to a dual bushing. So I'll start with this first carbon fibre tubing. So after a nice smooth motion here and no binding or, or stopping, and this one here seems quite good. It's sliding across quite freely and if I let gravity move the bushing, it's able to do so without an issue. Fantastic. Let's test the second carbon fibre tube. It's a bit sticky about there and then it's free here. So somewhere about, somewhere about here, it's sticking. So it looks like I'm going to need to somehow 
smooth out the small uh, variance in the diameter of this tube to ensure that this bushing doesn't bind up. So what we want to do is just smooth out those slight variations in the diameter of this section of the carbon fibre rod. And we're only talking tens of microns here. It isn't very much that we need to smooth off to allow this bushing to slide nicely across this section of the rod. And I guess the easiest way to do that is to sand it down. So I have a couple of sheets of uh, mildly coarse sandpaper here. I've got an 800 grit sheet here and I've got a 400 grit sheet here. And if these are still too coarse, well then I, I can go uh, up even further to a 1200 grit and that'll be nice and smooth. But I'll start off with some 400 grit sandpaper. Now when working on carbon fibre, you've got to be very careful. The fibres can be extremely small. So whenever you cut, or in this case, sand carbon fibre, it's best to wear some respiratory protection so you don't inhale any of the fibres. And even better, do this outside. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's try that bushing again. See if it sticks about this area. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So even though that section is now okay with the bushing, I'm just gonna go over this once more, just lightly with the smoother sandpaper. This is the P800 grit. Just to get rid of any streaks that might appear on there. I can see some streaks, but it feels smooth to the touch. Okay, so this section of the tube is now perfectly smooth for the single bushing, but what about our dual bushing setup? Let's see if this still slides smoothly across this section of the rail. Looks good so far. Oh, looks like it's sticking a bit. Oh, it's sticking quite a lot. Hmm, so it looks like whatever variations in diameter that the single bushing isn't experiencing in a 20 millimeter length. At 40 millimeters in length, this dual bushing setup is experiencing. What I might do, I might give the rest of that rod a light sanding as well, just to smooth out any lumps that might appear throughout the length of the rod, and also to give it that nice, smooth, uh, frictionless finish that I seem to be able to witness here just by pinching with my fingers as opposed to sliding uh, on the rod without the sanding. Alright, it took me a couple of goes to get these rods absolutely smooth so the dual bushing doesn't bind on the rod. And just to show you that now, nice and smooth. You can even hear that slotting across that rod beautifully. And here they are, the final product, carbon fibre tubing, 10mm diameter, cut down to length and sanded down for a smooth, even finish. So we can check the weight difference between the anodized aluminium and the carbon fibre. We'll start with measuring the anodized aluminium tubing. 56 grams. And now move on to the carbon fibre. 16 grams! That means for two pieces of this carbon fibre tubing on the X gantry, that's only 32 grams, where the aluminium is 112 grams. And we can measure what an 8mm steel rod would weigh. So here's a length of 8mm steel. It's about 15mm shorter than the other two, but this will give us a good idea of how heavy steel is compared to the aluminium and of course the carbon fibre. Hundred and thirty six and a half grams. That is over eight and a half times heavier than the carbon fibre. 
time to replace the aluminium X carriage with carbon fiber. On my Hypercube 3D printers, I'm using IGES plastic bushings, not the steel bushings that I was using originally. But that shouldn't impact the performance of the carbon fiber tubing. If anything, it'll probably increase the lifespan of the carbon fiber. What I'll do here though is I will simply remove the tubes as they are and, and replace these with a the carbon fiber. What I'd like to do though is be able to remove the pieces of tape that I have under here, which I have two or three slivers of tape over here and another two or three slivers of tape down here just to create a displacement because the diameter of this aluminium is 9.94 millimeters. It's 0 0.06 millimeters too small in diameter for these 10 millimeter bushings. The carbon fiber tubing that I have is closer to 10. It's high 9.9 .9, so I may not need the tape under here or at the very least I may not need the, the so many layers of tape but I'll just replace these as they are and we'll see how we go. Replacing the aluminium on the X gantry is pretty simple. I'll just simply loosen the nut and screw clamping the aluminium to the XY joiners. And then that should, in theory, slide out. Oh, look at that. Okay. I'll slide the, alum the uh, carbon fiber through the top of the XY joiner on this side. this back, slide that in, sliding through smoothly at the moment. Guide that in on that side, and it's through, and tighten that down. Let's do the same on the bottom, move that out of the way. Slide, slide it through the XY joiner on this side. Through the dual bushing holder. And through the other XY joiner. Moving the X carriage by hand seems pretty smooth. It's not binding up that I can tell, although the belts are still tight and in place. So what I might do is I might loosen the belts so I can move the X carriage freely and we'll see if it's binding up. Okay, belts are loose. I'll just remove the belts from the motors. That one and that one. So now this should move fairly freely. I'm fairly happy with that. It's not uh, super smooth, like it won't slide down with gravity. There is a slight bit of friction there, but I think that little bit of friction is good. In fact, of course, I've still got the slivers of tape underneath the uh, dual bushing holders to create the offset, so it is guaranteeing that the bushings are touching the tubing, but it's sliding really smoothly. It's not binding or sticking at all. I'm only putting a small bit of pressure on there to, to get it to slide. Okay, let's home the X carriage first to make sure it doesn't bind. Looks pretty good. Let's go to the middle, to the very end, and home again.
So far so good. It's passed the first test, printing a 100 by 100 millimeter test cube with a honeycomb infill. So the rocket gnome has finished printing and just checking the carbon fibre, still smooth and no black residue or any form of residue is left on the carbon fibre rods. They don't look as, low, as though they've worn out. Seems to work pretty well. So I've been printing a couple of hours so far with this carbon fibre tubing on the X gantry and I've got to say it's holding up really well. I'm actually quite surprised. If I knew this was going to be uh, this good early on in the build process of this build series, I would have used carbon fibre as opposed to aluminium. And you've got to agree, carbon fibre just looks awesome. It makes everything better. It might be premature to claim that carbon fibre is the way to go on this extra entry, but so far I am really impressed with the way this is performing. It's just as good as the anodized aluminium. But I've only been printing for a couple of hours. I really need to put a good 10 to, well, 100 hours through this printer with this carbon fiber to make sure that it is going to last as X gantry rails for the Hypercube. But I'm not the first person to use carbon fiber on the 3D printer. There are comments on the Thingiverse page where others have used carbon fiber with success. And we can find carbon fiber tubing almost anywhere. Just make sure you find the rolled carbon fiber, not the protruded carbon fiber, as the rolled carbon fiber has the fibers going uh, along the tube and also around the tube, where protruded only has the carbon fibers going along the tube, which means it's quite easy for them to splinter and split along the length of the tube. I picked these up off eBay, but I didn't realize at the time that Banggood sold these and they are pretty cheap on Banggood as well. I'll keep you all updated in future videos on the progress of printing with these carbon tubes, just to ensure that they are gonna stand the test of time. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you next time.